Hello, hope you are doing well. Welcome to your virtual experience of the Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. Sit back and relax. The former writer James Deering, owner of the estate of the Vizcaya Palace Museum and Gardens, located in Coconut Grove, just south of downtown Miami. The Vizcaya Museum and Gardens is most notable for its Italian Renaissance style architecture. It is referred to as the Faberge Egg House. Vizcaya's main house exhibit is filled with 15th to 19th century furniture, tapestries, paintings, and decorative art. The gardens were designed by Colombian landscape architect Diego Suarez in 1914. Suarez drew inspiration from classical European Renaissance and Baroque landscape design and applied it to Miami's subtropical climate and terrain. Suarez used native plant species to create an artistic tropical rendition of 16th and 17th century Italian and French gardens. Today, the house and gardens consist of only 50 of the original 180 acres and is owned by Miami-Dade County. Paul Chalfin, the property's original artistic advisor, adorned the gardens with Italian Baroque sculptures carved of Vicenza and Istrian stones. Fountains and ponds on the estate grounds are also carved from local resources like corals and limestone. 100 years ago, the great American sculptor Alexander Sterling Calder erected a breakwater in front of the main building, creating a carved limestone barge. He scented with mermaid engravings and Gratian columns. In its prime, the large carving was a party barge with a gazebo and small garden growing on its limestone deck. Just off of Biscayne Bay, the back of the house overlooks the barge, which since being built over 100 years ago, has begun to erode into the ocean. For example, one element is altar-like in white marble, featuring the carved heads of goats, cattle, and lions, and surrounding coral stone pillars with carving of the oak tree of Guernica, symbolizing to the freedom of the Basque Vizcaya in Spain. Outside of the house, there are 34 rooms open to the public with 70 total. Each is decorated with engraved trim, marble floors, intricate sconces, painted ceilings, and centuries-old furniture. Walking through the house feels as if you've traveled through time. The mansion valued at over $8 million and is filled with European artifacts from Deering's travels abroad. The reception room, located on the first floor, was designed to fit the ceiling, which was purchased by Deering while in Italy and transported back to Miami. In the courtyard, the glass ceiling allows enough sun to support the courtyard garden, which is home to tropical plants, mosses, and orchids. The swimming pool, which is not open to the public, is equipped with adorned ceiling and wall-to-floor engravings of fish, corals, and sea grasses. The ceilings, walls, and pool floor are made from carved limestone. This installation, although closed off due to social distancing regulations, is extremely important. This is because it is one of only two publicly owned works from the talented muralist Robert Winthrop Chandler. The Vizcaya Museum has been visited by prominent historical figures such as President Ronald Reagan, Pope John Paul II, and Queen Elizabeth of England. Miami-Dade County now owns the Vizcaya property and the Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, which is open to the public for an admission fee. Villa Vizcaya can also be rented for occasions like weddings, receptions, birthdays, and even political events, but must be reserved months and sometimes years in advance, depending. The Vizcaya Museum can be reached via Miami's public transportation system, either bus or metro. Accommodations in the area include hotels, motels, and B&A starting at $70 a night. The museum itself offers a cafe with a 5-star rating, with restaurants in the area range from gourmet Italian to seaside restaurants with a fish of the day. However, due to the coronavirus, the Vizcaya Cafe is temporarily closed to the public. Reverting back to a previously mentioned topic, the importance of Vizcaya. Vizcaya has had a significantly powerful impact over the culture of the area. From popes to pop stars, Vizcaya Museum and Gardens has played host to countless celebrities and dignitaries, 
and is still one of the most sought after locations for photo shoots, weddings, and events previously stated. This guy has provided the setting for many films, credited or uncredited. Here is a short list of a few. Bad Boys 2, The Champ, Iron Man 3, as well as the music video for Promise Me by Cover Girls. Scenes have also been seen on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. One thing many do not know about Vizcaya is his relations with urban farming. Four years ago, Vizcaya entered into a partnership with Edibles South Florida to present an annual dinner for farmers, a progressive farm-to-table meal in the village designed to honor farmers and the work they do to feed our community. This guy has a heart for urban farming even so much so that they developed their own school program, which was awarded the 2019 Edcom Award for Innovation in Museum Education by the American Alliance of Museums. This award recognizes, encourages, and celebrates the innovation in museum education. Vizcaya is a proud partner and supporter of Miami-Dade County's annual Bonanza Biscayne Bay Cleanup Day. Vizcaya and the county's Department of Economic and Regulatory Resources host a design contest to one encourage students in Miami-Dade to celebrate Biscayne Bay and understand its significance as one of the most important ecosystems in South Florida, and two, recognize adult and youth amateur photographers for capturing the beauty and importance of Biscayne Bay's ecosystem. For the student portion of the contest, all Miami-Dade County elementary, middle, and high school students are eligible to participate in the design contest for Bonanza 2020. Students create and enter a drawing that portrays Biscayne Bay and its unique natural environment. Class of winning student, first place, will get a field trip to Vizcaya Museum and Gardens with free admission and transportation for the current school year. Vizcaya's beautiful bayfront estate is a natural for embracing Bonanza, an annual celebration of Biscayne Bay, during which people from throughout the community come together to help clean up the bay. For 2019, Vizcaya partnered with Miami-Dade County's Department of Regulatory and Economic Resources to host a student design contest for Bonanza's t-shirt, poster, and bookmark. Students from elementary schools design t-shirts, from middle schools design posters, and from high school design bookmarks. A panel of eight judges selected three winners for each category. First place designs were printed for Bonanza 2019, and all winners received a framed copy of their design, a Vizcaya family membership, and an invitation for the students and their families to an award ceremony at Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. Bonanza is a celebration of Biscayne Bay Cleanup Day as one of the most important ecological systems in South Florida. While Bonanza includes more than 25 great events throughout March and April, the event has become nearly synonymous with the celebration of Earth Day. Architectural Inspiration Vizcaya was conceived as a modern and subtropical interpretation of an 18th century Italian villa, in particular, the country estates of the Veneto region of northern Italy. Its designers adapted traditional Mediterranean architectural elements to the subtropical climate with a remarkable sensibility for environmental issues. Innovations At Vizcaya, the reference to the past was coupled with an enthusiastic embrace of technology, modernity, and comfort. Regardless of its Baroque appearance, Vizcaya was a very modern house. Many are surprised to learn that it was built largely of reinforced concrete with the latest technology of the period, such as generators and a water filtration system. Vizcaya was also equipped with heating and ventilation, two elevators and a dumbwaiter, refrigerators, an automated telephone, switchboard, a central vacuum cleaning system, and a partly automated laundry room. The setting. Today, Vizcaya is an oasis of silence and green, miraculously preserved just south of Miami's modern skyline. The heart and main living area of the house is the courtyard, which was originally open to the sky. The house was designed to take full advantage of its location on Biscayne Bay. Deering wanted Vizcaya to be approached and seen from the sea. The east facade in the bay is the most monumental and the only symmetrical one. It opens onto a wide terrace that descends towards the water. The other sides of the house have unique relationships with the surrounding grounds. The West Facade, which has greeted visitors since Deering's time, is simple in contrast with Vizcaya's elaborate interiors. The North Facade accommodates one of Vizcaya's most delightful inventions, 
A swimming pool that emerges from vaulted arches at the lower level of the house. A south facade opens onto the formal gardens with enclosed loggias on the first and second floors. Interiors. On the first floor, several reception rooms, the library, music room, and the dining room surround the courtyard. The second floor housed Deering's personal suite of rooms and guest bedrooms, as well as a breakfast room in the kitchen. The interiors of the main house were meant to suggest the passing of time and the layered accumulation of artifacts and memories. The rooms were designed around objects acquired in Italy and assembled into the new compositions by artistic director Paul Chaflin. But the house's aesthetic significance and the modern efficiency were celebrated in architectural and engineering mag magazines at the time. Art Collections in the Main House The rooms in the main house were designed around pieces of furniture, paneling, and architectural elements, such as gates and fireplaces. Every object contributes to the decorative context of the room in which it resides. As such, the object's interiors played an important role in determining the architecture of the house. Chaplin was an expert in Italian furniture and interiors, and the rooms in the main house reflect his interest in different periods of history. The 18th century was the main inspiration for Vizcai, ranging from the asymmetrical and highly inventive Rococo to the more linear and austere neoclassical style. Chaplin also wanted to evoke the style of different Italian cities, and so Vizcai has rooms inspired by Milan, Palermo, and Venice. In Deering's personal suite, Chaplin assembled masculine but yet ornate furniture of the Napoleonic era, while in the living room and dining room he followed the fashion for modern renaissance interiors popular among art collectors in Europe and the United States. Chaplin was not interested in historical consistency and he was skilled at integrating new elements of his own design into old artifacts, creating a Celtic assembles. This guy was after all designed as a vacation house and the decor was consistently playful and whimsical. Nonetheless, today, Vizcaya has one of the most significant collections of Italian new furniture in the United States. Art Collections in the Gardens The statues, busts, vases, and urns that decorate Vizcaya's gardens range from antiquity to the Renaissance and Baroque periods and include modern art from Deering's time. While Chaffin's intent was to acquire artifacts as decoration rather than to assemble a collection, the gardens do preserve a large number of important 18th century sculptures representing mythological figures. These sculptures originally decorated villas around Venice, Italy. One of the most monumental outdoor sculptures at Vizcaya is the central element of the Fountain Garden. This was designed in 1722 by Filippo Bergioni, the architect who created the fountain in front of the Pantheon in Rome. What makes Vizcaya unique among American country estates of the time is the combination of these antique elements with new sculptural decorations by contemporary artists such as Gaston Lachaise, Charles Carey Rumsey, and Robert Winthrop Chandler. Chandler was responsible for the ceiling of the swimming pool, an extraordinary stucco best relief representing the underwater floor and fauna of the Florida Keys. The most outstanding of Vizcaya's 20th century features is the barge sculpted by Alexander Sterling Calder. Located in the water in front of the main house, the barge is a monumental breakwater shaped as a boat and decorated with carvings representing mythical Caribbean creatures. During Deering's time, there was also full-grown trees, a latticework pavilion, and mountains on the barge. Preservation and Conservation Vizcaya is constantly active in the presentation and conservation of this unique and fragile estate and its extremely varied collections. These collections include archival material and historic photographs, textiles, sculptures, paintings and furniture, monumental architectural elements, and a living collection of historic plants, some of which date back to James Deering's day. Though Deering used high quality materials and construction techniques at Vizcaya, the estate is more than a century old and for many years funding was not available for maintenance and capital projects. The estate's subtropical location on Biscayne Bay is deeply relevant to Biscayne's beauty and significance. This location, however, also exposes Biscayne's historic artifacts to saline and damp conditions in the periodic devastation of hurricanes, the first of which occurred in 1926. With every preservation and conservation project, Vizcaya conducts archival and field research to understand how things were made and how they looked in Deering's day. Vizcaya's designers wanted it to look old as soon as it was built, so the staff do not strive to make things look pristine or new. They also perform conditions assessment and material analysis to document prior treatments and determine what approach might be best. 
and on each of these projects, the Vizcaya staff collaborate with architects, conservators, and scholars with the appropriate skills, training, and experience. The Gardens Vizcaya's European-inspired gardens are among the most elaborate in the United States. Reminiscent of gardens created in 17th and 18th century Italy and France, the overall landscape design is conceived as a series of rooms. The central space is dominated by low edges and a geometric arrangement. Beyond that are the evocative secret garden, the intimate theater garden, the playful maze garden, and the once watery domain of the fountain garden. On either side of this design landscape, Deering preserved the native forest. Vizcaya's exuberant gardens are characterized by an abundance of architectural structures and details, elaborate fountains, and antique and commissioned sculptures. The use of sculptures that were already old and of soft and porous coral stone resulted quite intentionally in the gardens having a weathered appearance soon after their completion. To further the appearance of age, Deering and Chalfin planted numerous mature trees along with vines and plants that would drape themselves over the garden structures. Orchid Collection Deering loved orchids, had large greenhouses to encourage their bloom for cut flower arrangements, specifically requested that live orchid plants be attached to the trees around the north side of his house. Orchids still have a prominent presence in Vizcaya thanks to the David A. Klein Foundation, which funds Vizcaya's orchid program. Greenhouses shelter a collection of over 2,000 plants, and many of those are used for floor displays in the David A. Klein Orchidarium in the courtyard of the main house. Vizcaya's collection includes many Florida natives and warm-growing exotic orchids, and some of significant size and rarity, like the Phalaenopsis bulbifolum and Sinopia species. Hidden Rooms Like many gilded age homes, Vizcaya has its share of hidden passages and doors. None of these can be seen during a regular visit or private tour, so the museum has created a special video tour to share its secrets. In this video tour, Deputy Director for Collections and Curatorial Affairs Remco Janzonius takes you behind the scenes to show us the different hidden doors and passages throughout the estate. Spectral Vizcaya Sebastian Duncan Partuando's first project at Vizcaya was arrangements for a concrete box, part of the 2015 exhibition Fantastical Vizcaya, which celebrated the theatrics of the estate as envisioned by Paul Chalfin. In that commission, Duncan Portuando brought Vizcaya's archives to life on a grand scale through light and color, including stained glass projections and shadow theater. He returns on February 26, 2021 with Spectra Vizcaya, which will be a similar experience with one main difference, that it is built with and by community members and local volunteers who will be part of this performance. During this Spectral Vizcaya production, audience members will meet and interact with historical figures. This might mean having conversation with Altia Ultimus, the Ring Secretary, and sing along with the Gondolier, or creating your own lantern in a workshop led by Sebastian to add your own light to the performance. As visitors walk along the East Terrace, their shadows will be projected onto the facade of the main house, activating the estate with the illusion of many more phantom guests. Painting a Vizcaya Vizcaya has been a source of inspiration and creativity for its visitors even before it became a public museum in 1954. You can continue following this tradition by sketching and painting in the gardens. As Vizcaya is a National Historic Landmark, know that only select materials are approved for use on their official website. Plan your artist date in advance by reviewing the approved list of materials on their website. Find a shady spot outside and be inspired. Imagine the music. As you walk through the timeless halls of Vizcaya's main house, you might feel as if a soundtrack is playing in your head. As you go from room to room and traverse different periods of time, that music might change. First, you may think you hear a harp playing Baroque music as you enter the music room. Then perhaps a rendition of the Phantom of the Opera might take over as you see the pipe organ in the living room. Sounds of the soundtrack. As you then venture into the gardens, perhaps these tunes change into movie soundtracks as you walk by the swimming pool grotto and imagine Ace Ventura climbing the banister to the theme of Mission Impossible. If you like the idea of creating a soundtrack for your Vizcaya visit, check out the museum's Spotify account. In collaboration with staff, Vizcaya has created playlists themed after different rooms, design styles, and time periods. An ordinary part of an extraordinary home. The kitchen at Vizcaya, found on the second floor near the breakfast room, is one location on the estate where guests can encounter the commonplace in this exceptional home. 
Few of us have homes with such opulent decorations, but most homes have kitchens and some of us even know how to cook. Visitors can imagine themselves in Vizcaya's kitchen because cooking is an experience we all share. It is known that James Deering employed a French chef to travel with him and cook for his guests. Vizcaya Mail Get Vizcaya delivered to your home with Vizcaya Mail with this history buff subscription service for adults curated by those who know the estate best, Vizcaya staff. It's a perfect gift for Vizcaya lovers and history buffs alike. Each month, Vizcaya puts together a theme packet that takes you deeper into the history and stories of the ground estate. You can get Vizcaya Mail for one or several months. Beginning Photography Vizcaya is proud to be one of Miami's most photogenic spots, a title given to the estate by numerous publications and backed by the 300,000 plus annual visitors that frequent the estate. Taking a walk on the wild side. Vizcaya is home to so much more than art and history. A variety of wild creatures live in and around their property and every year, Wild of Vizcaya is an event that brings scientists and visitors together to learn more about them. The program, created by National Geographic under the name BioBlitz, started in 2016. Every year, visitors come to Vizcaya to work alongside scientists and experts from Vizcaya, NOAA, Florida International University, University of Miami, Miami Waterkeeper, and more to explore the estate through the lens of science outside the lab and the field. Wild of Vizcaya is divided into two sessions, daytime and nocturnal. The daytime edition is a dedicated session for 140 school students who explore stations in small groups for lessons that complement skills and content taught in the classroom. Not all students visit the same stations and they are encouraged to share their experiences with their classmates at the end of the day. The nocturnal edition focuses on the intersection of art and science since there is less wildlife activity during these hours, which is 6 to 9 p.m. Adults and children explore family-friendly stations at their own pace, like shadow puppetry workshops and performances about the local environment. Adults and children explore family-friendly stations at their own pace, like shadow puppetry workshops, performances about the local environment, night hikes with black lights, and light sheets to attract all kinds of bugs. Glowing drinks and black light body art also demonstrate bioluminescence and camouflage with a fun twist. For those who wish to film footage at Vizcaya Museum and Gardens, a filming permission has to be requested and granted, which has to be booked at least a month in advance. Vizcaya is a good experience to join if you're looking for something unique and different, and especially if you are particularly interested in history or architecture or something like that, because that is a lot of what Vizcaya has to offer. Vizcaya would also be a good investment if you're intrigued in things such as botany, as huge aspect of Vizcaya as is in the name implies their gardens. I would highly recommend visiting Vizcaya to those with these interests. However, if you are not one of those, you may want to reconsider visiting as, as otherwise there's less things to enjoy. Vizcaya is a good place to go to get inspired, appreciate your local community, and admire the beauty of nature.